All right. So we've got five minutes, six minutes late, so that means we're on time to start. You better hurry up. You better hurry up. There's no way this morning. This is going to be bad. There's a lot to cover in this last lesson. Uh, a bunch. This is, today is August 30th. We are on lesson number 13 of the summer quarter, which hopefully that means it is about to start getting cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe in a month. <clears throat> but the entire quarter, which we're about to cap off, we uh, focused on what? Things we recognize <coughs> as given in God's Word. The first, um, first study was organization of the church. Two was aids to Christian fellowship. Uh, <laughs> and as I was thinking about that last night, I was like, the food is going to be smelling really good as we're talking about Christian fellowship. That was lesson number two. Number three, um, hindrances to fellowship. Four, preaching and teaching God's word and no one else's. Five, building the body. The body is what? The church. The, church, the congregation, the membership, yes. Six, serving those in need. Seven, the world of shepherds. And by shepherds, we were studied and meant what? Or who? What, what position in the structure of the church? Elders. elders. Yes, no, all those things. People in, people in leadership roles, yes, specifically elders, deacons, that kind of thing. Uh, and that was the world of shepherds. This morning today, we're going to see the greatest shepherd of all. Um, number eight was congregation and the shepherds. That's how the congregation and the elders and deacons were to uh, act towards one another. Verse, uh, number nine, the return of Jesus. Ten was the judgment. We found out that that is, I know that that is a very real thing. Number eleven was the punishment of hell. And twelve, happily, uh, was the reward of heaven. So it brings us to lucky number 13. This morning's lesson is entitled what? The Lord is my shepherd. My is underlined in my Bible. And I remember that happening for a reason. Like a, during, a, during a sermon. The Lord is my shepherd. So, of course, that is verse 1 of Psalm 23. Um... It's been a good stay this quarter, and I have actually enjoyed it uh, very much, and I'm glad that we're getting to top it off with this lesson. Um, and this lesson is actually going to kind of help roll into the next quarter, and we can make sure everybody's got a book if you don't have one. But next quarter is going to be the miracles of Jesus. So I like this study a lot, but as I was telling last week, Brother Wiley and Sister Pat, it's sometimes hard to talk about amorphous kind of large study, large, large topic. So, but uh, next quarter is going to be more historical things and then everything that goes with that. So quick, fast, and in a hurry, as my dad used to say to us when we weren't moving. Um, this morning's lesson, the Lord is my shepherd. Will someone read or recite Psalm 23 to me? To us, please. The Lord is my shepherd and shepherd. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, the rod and your staff that come me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know my head to go off, my cup runs off. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God forever. Thank you. We are all very familiar with Psalm 23, are we not? Yes. Who <clears throat> is credited for pinning Psalm 23? David. David. And he was known as a man after God's own heart. Yes. Um, I know we've all probably heard many lessons and done many studies on this. We're going to be quick on this part because the, the next part, we're pretty much just doing all of John chapter 10. 
but verse number one, the Lord is whose shepherd? My shepherd. I shall not want. What does he mean want? What does want mean? Difference in between four-year-old child's want and what he mean, what is meant by want. Or, or even my son's need. He says that now. I, apparently we did, Kenny and I did that as children. We go to the store, I need so-and-so. I need, you need that? Really, son? I need it. Yes, sir. You know, when you make that statement, the Lord is my shepherd, when you understand what a shepherd is, yes. then that, that right there, it just is a blanket that just covers you with all your needs and things. The mm-hmm. Lord is that for you for everything. And the shepherd was everything to the sheep. You know, to protect them, he made sure they had good water and good grass and just everything that watched happen from thieves and robbers and wild animals. It, it's just a, that's, that's a confidence statement. Yes, it is. It's a, and it's a Incredibly strong statement to come out with at the very beginning. Just the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes, sir, very true. Want, meaning need for anything. Because, as Joe said, the Lord will provide <clears throat> and take care of. Verse 2 He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Lying down is sort of a. Well, in this example, would a sheep lie down or will an animal lie down if it's uncomfortable, if it's scared, if it's... Calm. It's got to be calm. It's got to be calm to do it. Yes, sir? Fang guts. Fang guts will. That's more like... Possum's <laughs> will. Yeah, possum. Yeah, possum. <laughs> but that also shows the sheep their subjection to the shepherd. They lie down and hand everything over to the shepherd. It's also relaxing and peaceful. They're yes. Not, they're not going to do that if they're not at peace. Precisely. So submission at peace. Green pastures, you're going to have food, nourishment, provision, comfort, safety, everything you need. He leads me beside still waters. I don't, I'm not a shepherd of sheep, but I'm pretty sure this is true. Will sheep drink water that's just flowing? They don't like it. Sheep can drown if they fall into water, because, especially if they're... They have a lot of wool. They seek like rock. They'll drown. So, um, <clears throat> three, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Why? So I can be a better person and better than everybody else. Why? The last part of verse three. For his name's sake. Yes, for his glory. Verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The next part is the why, but it's the same thought to me as Philippians 4, 3. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8, 31, What can we say to these things? For if God is for us, who can be against us? I will fear no evil because we have the Lord and Shepherd. Savior, who's the shepherd. Because number four, you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Um, We've all seen the picture that comes to mind, the shepherd sitting there with a staff with a big cane and the crook. (coughs) Were those just walking sticks? What were they used for? It can do everything they want or need or, or ask it to do or direct it to do. The, the crook in it, if the sheep gets in the water, if it falls down, if it gets somewhere you can't get to, you can just turn it upside down, grab it by the neck, pull it out. 
And at the same time, that same rod staff that is helpful, it can turn around the other way and use it against things that are coming after the fold. My cup runs over. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some translations, instead of dwell, translate as return. So, I will dwell, I will return. I'm going home where I belong in the house of the Lord forever. The last two studies, when we studied uh, the reward of heaven and before that, Brother Wiley covered the punishment of hell, we kind of, we touched on forever. You know, how long is that? <laughs> forever. Today, tomorrow, the next day, and then some. It's not stopping. <clears throat> um, so how long are people going to be in heaven or six, or hell, when they get there, forever. Um, so what does the Good Shepherd, or uh, our Shepherd, Lord, and Savior do? What did he do by example during his time incarnate in the flesh on the earth? He gives us confidence and faith. Yes. And he did this by leading by example, among other things, um, and he led by example because he was, is and was the only one that could. In the illustration of sheep, what if one of the sheep says, I'm going to lead us today. <laughs> today I'm going to be the boss, not the shepherd. There's only one Lord. There's only one shepherd. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is watch people in mass, like in traffic and groups of people and if, if there's one person that has a shirt that this person's the security guard or this or the follow me, but somebody else just stands up, no, y'all don't fit. What happens? It starts to just go wrong. It goes awry. I don't know if you've ever seen ants that just popped them out where ants will go in a line and they're, they'll, they're just following. But if you, if you break that, they just, they'll start going everywhere. Um, he led by example because he's the only one that could. Um, as we said, could one of the sheep, meaning any man, could any man, any woman, anybody else do what Jesus did and do it perfectly? No, of course not. Um, if, you, if, if you or anybody puts their faith and looks to anyone but Jesus, they're eventually going to be let down. Um, only Jesus could do this because he is the only one who could go and prepare the highway for us to go to. That's the first set of verses on the first topic, which is he leads. The second set is starts off John chapter 10. Does anybody have anything else before we start on John chapter 10? <clears throat> They say the other animal afraid, and if they're not the smartest animal, how could they ever try to lead the shepherd? Yeah. Uh, so if we are sheep, then we can never lead. Yeah, well, that's the illustration. That we have to be like sheep. You have to be as children, as little. What happens when children just try to run the show? It usually doesn't end well. Yeah, they make a mess of it. So that's what we are, and we have to recognize that's what we are in our relationship to God. And normally when we say, I can do it myself, it's, it's, not, it's one of those things, I'm doing this for you. This is for your good. Go ahead and try to do it yourself, and you're going to find out. You're going to find out that we can't. John chapter 10. We're going to end up doing all of verses 1 through 30, maybe. Um, Book of John, of course, penned by John the Apostle, brother of James, son of Zebedee, and so called one of the so called sons of Thunder. Yes. Um, verse number, let's do 10 through 6. Uh, Bob, the book only does 10 through 4. We'll do 10 through 6. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter... Wait, who's talking here first? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Who is he speaking to? Well, who, who was definitely there? <laughs> yes, but I mean, he... Yes. What do we know about the Pharisees? They just steady tried to catch him in something. Tried to always catch him and pin him in a corner and get him on this. I got you on this. <laughs> Pharisees were one of three sects of the Jews at the time. So, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is the thief and a robber. But... He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. <clears throat> We've touched on this already back in verse 10. Or, sorry, verse 1. Um, he who does not enter the sheep fold. Sheep fold, we talked about this when the sheep lie down in green pastures. They are submitting. They have to submit to the shepherd. It's not the other way around. If they don't submit to the shepherd or if they think I'm going to do this on my own and then maybe I'll have the shepherd help me every once in a while. You're not really a part of the sheep fold. <laughs> that's when, yeah, they, they get in trouble and they're like, oh, that's, that's normally when people, not normally, that's when a lot of people go to prayer, go to ask for help when they actually need it. But when they're doing good, you know, it's easy to forget that you didn't get here by, on your own. You didn't get in, you know, in good graces on your own. Um, but climbs up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. Let's remember who he's talking to. He's talking to the Pharisees. Did he just call the Pharisees thieves and robbers to their face? Yep. Because that's what they were. That's what he called them. Um, so not just that. He's, he, not only was he saying that they were wrong, but he was saying that they were taking thieves and robbers of what? People. Of people. But they didn't understand. No. They were, they were taking, they were stealing from Jesus. They were taking people. Um, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The door. Does a, does a thief go in the door usually? No. Nope. Yeah. I have had to go climb in the house or climb out of the house through a window before at our house and I had to climb in it and lock myself out. But normally, which way do you go in your house? Through the door? Because it's your house. Uh, <clears throat> enters by the door as a shepherd of the sheep. So the door is the right way. The owner enters through the door. Verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens. Who's the doorkeeper? And God the Father, right? And the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. If we know Jesus, will we follow him? Yes. Yes. What if people, what if, if, if people say, I follow Jesus, and then they do stuff on the regular. We're not talking about mistakes. If they live this life, but say, uh, Yeah, what if, you, what if you're, you say you're part of the flock, but you're out in the mountains, you're up in the hills doing your own thing as a sheep, and you go over here and you come back over there? This is right. Yeah. Are you, you're astray. Once a year, twice a year, you come into the flock, and it's like, hey, I'm back, or I'm here. You've been over there this entire time. You've been here, you've been there. That's what he's saying. Um, so what if you say it, but you don't act it? Luke 6, 46. Uh, what if they call Lord, Lord? I'm a shepherd, Lord, Lord. But they don't. They hadn't acted that way the whole time. Five, yet they by no means will follow a stranger. They, that's the sheep. 
but will flee from him, that's the stranger, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Still, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees here. Um, he called the Pharisees who had the pendants and we have the word of God. He called them, y'all, your thieves, robbers, strangers, you have no part of anything. And that, that was their life. Uh, Jesus used this illustration, but what? They did not understand. How could they understand? Because they were, were they following, were they trying to really follow God or Jesus, the Pharisees? Who were they following? Themselves. Their positions of power. They're trying to control. Yeah. 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 somewhere, it's probably later on in the study. Everyone, not everyone, I keep on using these general terms, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Normally, you say the name Jesus and people think of the picture of a white guy with brown hair and blue eyes holding a staff and looking all peaceful and calm. That is most likely not what Jesus was. He was dark skinned, black, tan, whatever he was, and he was a carpenter, probably a stone carpenter, he was probably huge. And how is he talking to the Pharisees here? Now, don't get me wrong, Jesus knew these people's heart. But, but he was straightforward. Was he being, well, that's your, if that's what you think. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't say, well, that's your opinion, and let me, let's talk about it. You know, he called himself Lord mm -hmm. a lot of times, and he didn't call anybody else. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that's about as authoritative as you can say. Yeah. yeah. And we'll go through, if we get through this some more, they're like, tell us plainly, tell, like, we're about to get into it right here. It's like, you can't be any more plain than he says right in the next few verses. Um, this section is, he protects, uh, verses 7 through 21, but would somebody read 7 through something, 7 through uh, 12, quickly, please. Seven. Yes. Then said Jesus unto them, being bowed with I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear me. I am the door by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find the path. Uh, do, um, down to 12, please, or down to 11. Uh, these comments not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his what sheep. Thank you. How many times did he just say I am? Three. Three times. And he says it again in verse 14. So he made the illustration before, and now he's bringing it around. I am the door. I am the way. So, and there's. What about people who say, well, Jesus never said he was the only way, or Jesus never said there weren't other ways? <laughs> all who, verse number eight, all, that's a pretty broad word, it's from Jesus, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. They're trying to steal what is not theirs. But the sheep did not hear them. I am, here's theirs, number two, I am the door. <clears throat> Verse number 10, what's the only reason why a thief comes into your house? To steal. 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 Yeah, he's going to go in. The thief's coming to steal and then he's going to do whatever else he wills while he's in there. Mm-hmm. That's what, yeah. 
He doesn't come for any reason other than, so except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, I have come that they may have, more, have life and have it more abundantly. So not only is Jesus the only way of salvation, but also all other ways are for what? For what purpose? What is any other way but Jesus meant for? Death, destruction, thief, thievery. Um, so not only is Jesus the one that he protects us from that and gives us stuff on, gives us life more abundantly on top of that. So, uh, yes, sir? He used your way of talking about these Pharisees and how they were going, but he didn't make them plain. That if any one come to your house, did he not come for the right reason? He was thinking he come in there to destroy them. Yes. And whether he's lying or not, that's what he's there for. Yeah. Well, they're a good, they're a good guy. I, mean, I know everybody knows people who they're really good people, but ultimately they come there to destroy. Yeah, but well, you can't talk in general terms like that. You can't paint with broad pictures. You can't say that everybody, all, hard truths. Jesus wasn't afraid to say hard truth. Say hard truth. Uh, verse number eleven again, the third time. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd does what? Puts his life. Puts his life for his sheep. Sacrificial, agape type love. Uh, verse 12. But a hireling, he who is not the good shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves. <laughs> sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the other, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. A hireling, somebody else, anybody but the real shepherd. There's only one real shepherd. Um, so if they're not really the shepherd, if they're not really the owner and the one responsible for it, what, what's going to happen to any of these people who's, who I'm playing shepherd today? <laughs> what are they going to do when the wolf or whatever trials come? What are they really going to do? What's going to happen? <laughs> See ya. We don't have don't have to outrun the wolf. Yeah. I only have to outrun you. I only have to outrun the sheep. This is a terrible illustration of it, but um, and we don't have time, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, when I was at MSU, the straight line winds came through and uh, tore a bunch of stuff up. And we were in temporary facilities, meaning we were in the trailers. And that was a tornado because we were in it because the doors spun open and the building actually expanded. And we had a teacher who had an office in one of the trailers. And we were in studio. What's a teacher ultimately supposed to do? He's in there on a the computer watching the weather, getting alerts, getting all that kind of stuff. Should the teacher go, guys, let's go, let's do this, everyone, let's go across? Isn't that what a teacher is supposed to do? I contend that this man was not really our teacher. <laughs> he was a hireling. And he's gone now. He was a doctor and I don't know if I said his name and all, but he's gone. He's somewhere else. The weather was getting bad, and we were like, is it getting bad? And about that time, he's like, guys, y'all better go. He was gone. He was gone. And everybody's like, what's going on? And like after two minutes, it was happening so fast. About two minutes, it was like, boom, boom. We're like, what's happening? Well, where's the teacher? He's gone. <laughs> The building had siding around the bottom and the storm was so bad it ripped it to shreds. But there was a chunk this big and everybody who was in the studio when this happened, we all signed it and wrote stuff on it because we were there you know, and we almost died. Power lines fell across the road and were sparking and we're running through the rain and everything. And one of the parts on there was a picture about, you know, this big where somebody had drawn, it was a caricature of the teacher where he had his, had his backpack and he was running like this. <laughs> With the little, little speed signs, and it's like, bye. <laughs> he had tenure. He was the doctor. He was this at school, right? Was he in that in that illustration? Was he the shepherd? No, he was gone. When the wolf came, he was like, y'all better take care. That's what they do. We say all that stuff because it's funny, but it's in actuality when we when that happens in in a spiritual sense, 
It's awful. Um, Calling in my own little five ten of the Facebook mm -hmm. threads that are around. There's a story going around right now about a, a sheep that hid from the shepherd, supposedly hid, mm -hmm. in a cave for six years. And when he finally was discovered or came out or whatever, he was dirty and he had six years of weight and wool and stuff on him. Yes, mm -hmm. And he was, they shared him, and he was pure and light and free again and white. And that's just a perfect little analogy yes. of us hiding from God, Jesus, and not wanting to be cleansed. Yes. You know? It's the prodigal son. It's the parable of the prodigal it's, son. It's a beautiful story. And they didn't do that. It just, that's my own. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. I mean, we, we always have that to come back to, to the shepherd. You just have to make sure it's the real shepherd. and That's Jesus. Um, verse 14, this is under he protects. This is the fourth time Jesus says, I am. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. That's important. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And lay down my life for my sheep. We all here can agree that God the Father exists and that He knows us, right? He knows the hairs on our head. He knows. So as He knows us, do we... Do Can I say right now that I know God the way He knows me? I sure can. That's important, right? He, who's he talking to? The Pharisees. He just told that to them. Somebody can't be more plain than this. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, uh, them I must also bring that they hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So are all the sheep do all the sheep belong to Jesus? Yeah. Whether they're out in the mountains, out in the cave, hiding in the cave, hiding in the cave or with the rest down by the green grass, they're still all God's sheep. They still all belong to Christ. <clears throat> um, but not all are in, as he said, this fold. Therefore my Father loves me because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. <clears throat> I have the power, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. He was told this to the Pharisees. <laughs> 19, 20, 21. Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. Um, to use an expression in the movie I saw, uh, Jesus made Jesus' words made the cheese slide off their cracker. They went, what did he say? They got very upset. And many of them said, he has a demon, he's mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? They did what? They discredited him. They said, he's crazy. He's this, he's that. He's Let's just discount him altogether. So, uh, someone in the wild enough to know that what Pharisees say is not true? Yeah. These are not the words of a demon. Can a demon close the eyes of the blind? The last section is he rewards, but we don't have time at all for your out and there's food out there. But thank you all, all very much. It's a very good study. I very much enjoyed this quarter. So next week will be uh, We'll start with the first lesson on the miracles of Jesus.